This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Dyson Sphere program video. Today we're going to talk about power, specifically the Dyson Swarm versus solar panels. Let's get to it. So if we take a look here at our technologies tree, you can see relatively early game, you can get the solar panels. It's under the solar collection here. It's only going to cost you 200 of the blue cubes, but it doesn't take very long before you can unlock the Dyson Swarm, which is the solar sail orbit system, which costs you 300 of the blue cubes and 300 of the red cubes. Pretty easy to get a hold of early game. And you're probably going to want to try to use this early game. And I'm going to tell you, don't pretty much don't even use it mid to late game. It's not worth it. This is trash compared to this. And I'm going to show you why. So if we take a look at one of my solar panels here, let's go over to one that's in daylight. You can see that this only has a 98% efficiency and it's producing 352 kilowatts of power. One of these little solar sails launched into orbit only provides about 35 kilowatts of power. And I say 35 because it's not completely 35. It does a little bit of rounding in there if you do the math. So it provides about 35 kilowatts of power. That means that you need about 10 of these bad boys to equal the same amount of power that you're getting from one solar cell. The downside is that these only have a time of 1,800 seconds. Now you can research this up, but we're going to go with the base time here. You can research the time. Uh, where is it here? So you can get, once you get the yellow cubes, you can't increase the time until you get the yellow cubes. And then you can only increase it by 150 seconds. Then you have to research it again to add another 150 seconds. Then again, to add 300 seconds. And then you can't increase it anymore until you get the purple cubes. And then you can increase it by 300 seconds. So it takes a while to to get it any more than 1800 seconds which is about 30 minutes so you have to launch a new one to replace that one every 30 minutes and you're like well that's not bad every 30 minutes that's not really anything if we take a look here you can see i have 402 of these in orbit already and they're only making 14.4 megawatts of power so on the screen is how much that would cost resource wise. Now remember that that's not a one time thing. You're going to constantly have to launch these and constantly be spending resources to keep up that 14.4 megawatts of power. In contrast, I can make about 40 solar panels and put them at one of my caps here or make 80 and put 40 at each cap and get a continuous stream of power equal to that 14 watts. Here's a comparison on the screen right now of the resource cost of 402 solar sails to 40 solar panels. And here's that cost if you want to do 80 solar panels, putting 40 at both the top and bottom poles of your planet. So you're like, that's great fire, but what if I want a buttload of power? If you put the solar panels at the top and bottom poles of your planet, like I've done here, if you take a look, here's the top pole, here's my bottom pole, you can get an insane amount of continuous power. How much? Well, I'm not even sure how much I have here because I wasn't counting. I was just covering the tops of my planet. Um, but with what I have now, I'm producing 119 megawatts of power. Once again, in contrast, here's the orbit where we have 14.8 megawatts of power, which is a little over 411 solar sails that I continuously have to launch into orbit. So let's just say you did 100 solar panels. On the screen right now is the cost of 100 solar panels. And you took 50 of those and you put them on your North Pole and you took 50 and you put them on your South Pole doing something similar to what I've done here. That's the cost. That's it. That's all it would cost you for a one-time fee of resources for continuous non-stop power. And let's just say you have 25 of those in direct sunlight at any given point of time. That's going to get you 8 megawatts of power just from the ones that are in direct sunlight. If we take a look here, not all of them are in direct sunlight, so they're not all getting the same amount of power. But if we take a look here at the ones in the back, they're at 61%, making about 200, 217, 218 kilowatts of power, depending on where they are in the, the circle here. So there you can see that one's at 
225 slowly going down the ones here in the back uh, 181 180 so if we take just this chunk that i have up here and we remove this and we just place an, a random uh, tesla tower down here so we can see how much we're making with just what i have here and that's not a lot like i said i'm not counting it you can you can hear it here i'll uh move this out of the way if you really want to count those you can count them just what we have here not all of them in direct sunlight some are some aren't i'm making 70 megawatt well 69.9 megawatts now of continuous power if we take a look at my other pole here so here's what i have at my other pole we're making 51 megawatts of continuous power that means if i wanted equal power provided my math's right here and if my math's not right on any of this let me know down in the comments i'm not the strongest in math but i do my best so if my math is right here uh 51 of the megawatts should be 50 well it's 54 now but that should be 54,100 kilowatts um so if my math is right there that means we would have to launch about 1,457 solar panels into orbit or the solar sails into orbit and we're producing that with just this little chunk of solar panels right here which are extremely cheap to make so if you're not familiar with the collectors that you need in order to actually get power from the solar sails you need these ray receivers in order to actually receive the power from the solar sails to get those it's an additional 600 of the blue and red cubes 600 each of them to unlock the technology to even receive the power from the solar sail system all in all to get the solar sails it's going to cost you 900 of each of the blue and red cubes and they don't work quite like you think they would work they have to be in view of the sun just like the solar panels and then they receive and gather power over time if we take a look here i have a bunch of them i have this all the way around the planet connected to the other side i have some on the other side set up exactly like i do here and you can see they're they're dead center at the top and they go out each way so they're at the there's one at the center of the pole and then i have one in each of the four directions it's the same way down at the bottom if we take a look at those right now our generation capacity is only 1.6 megawatts so if we take a look here our total output right now is four well i apparently lost a bunch of solar sails um, but our total output right now is 4.52 megawatts out of that we're only currently able to get 1.68 these things are so incredibly inefficient for being apparently the next step in solar power that your best bets just to not even use them not only do you have to put out a ton of resources continuous resources and the power that it takes to that you have to generate in order to shoot them the solar sails into the sky you're not even making a crap load of power to begin with so we're making 1.68 out of our total four 4.52 that we could be generating with these at the top and bottom of our poles like we would have the solar panels now you're like well what if you don't put them at the top and bottom of your poles well then you're only going to be generating power when the planet is in direct sunlight or i should say when they are in direct sunlight and that side of the planet is in direct sunlight and then they have to generate over time this will start out as zero and the continuous receiving thing there will continue to go up and they will generate more power as time goes on as they spend time in the sunlight so your best option is to put them in a situation where they're going to be in the most continuous amount of sunlight as possible you can see here these aren't even getting any sunlight right now uh, their signal strength is too low for them to even get the continuous receiving let's go check the ones at the other half of the on the other side of the planet so these should be a little bit better because they're in more sunlight than the other ones so that one is at 100 percent yeah all of them are at 100 percent over here and you can see that the continuous receiving on this one's almost at uh, what is that 62 percent which allows it to have the max output of 9.74 megawatts but it's not even outputting that we're it's only outputting currently uh 234 kilowatts 
And all of, once again, all of them combined at my north and south poles, a total of 10, I have five at each pole, we're only outputting 1.62 megawatts of power. So trying to use the solar sails isn't only inefficient when it comes to the amounts of resources that it, you have to spend in order to get any decent amount of power. It's just inefficient altogether. Honestly, I don't know why they gave them a lifespan. They would be so much better if they were launched into orbit and then stayed there. And if you needed to remove them, there was an option to remove them from orbit, like a decay orbit button that just sent them into a decaying orbit. And then they would gain a life and slowly fade out or something like that. I feel like it's the time that they last and the fact that you have to continuously launch them. You have to launch a replacement for the one that you launch or for every single one that you launch every 30 minutes. And yes, I know you can eventually double that time, leaving them up there for an hour before you have to launch another one. But that's still insanely inefficient when it comes to comparing it to just putting a bunch of solar panels at your north and south poles on your planet. Now, also keep in mind that this varies depending on how far a planet is from the sun and the stats for a specific planet. If we take a look here, if I put a solar panel down in direct sunlight on this planet here, you can see that it's only 67% efficiency. If we go out to my solar view here and we take a look at this planet, it tells you that the solar ratio here is only 67%. So no matter what, no matter where I put a solar panel on this planet in direct sunlight, it's only ever going to be 67% efficient. But if we look at this planet over here, the, my home planet, you can see that its solar energy ratio is 98%. So I'm going to get much better power over here than I am at this planet over here that's much further from the sun. So that's something to keep in mind when you're comparing these two systems together. But at the same time, even at 67% efficiency, it's outputting 241 kilowatts of power. This is only outputting 172 kilowatts of power. It, it's at 100% efficiency. Well, not necessary. It's at 66% uh, receiving right now at 100% strength. But I mean, Eh, if I have to choose, even on a distant planet, it's 67% efficiency, I'm still going to choose the solar panels. So I realize that this game is early access and there still needs to be some tweaks. I think this is definitely one that they need to tweak because it's just not worth going for and it should be worth going for because it's further down the tech tree. It should be your advancement in power and shouldn't actually set you back. They could do a few different things with this. Everything from remove the lifetime timer on the solar sails or just increasing the overall efficiency altogether and allowing them produ to produce way more power. Rem remember, it's only 35 kilowatts of power per solar sail that you launch into orbit. And the cost of sending enough solar sails into orbit to equal one solar panel is a lot more expensive. And I know you're like, well, Firespark, it should be more expensive because it's a, it's a higher in the tech tree. It's better tech. And that's true. It should be. But the situation is, is while it's more expensive, even for the gun, you have to make the guns to launch the things, the solar sails themselves and the receivers, all of that way more expensive and produces less power overall and is not only more resource intensive, it's less energy efficient. So let me know what y'all think about this guide. Uh, have you come to the same conclusion? Do you use these for power and are you getting a decent amount of power? How many solar sails did you actually have to launch to get a decent amount of power from these things? Is there something I missed in this guide that I should be pointing out? I do know that they eventually can get the photon generation, but I haven't got to that point yet. It also says gravitation lens in here and, uh, while I have a gravitation lens, I can't actually put it in there. And I don't see an option to inject them in there any type of way. So I'm not sure if I have to research something later that allows me to actually like put the gravitation lens in there. And uh, I still apparently have to unlock the photon generation. And I'm not sure how to do that yet. Uh, this guide is mainly just taking a look at them before you get to the point of all of that. 
and take a look at them as a stepping off point for your power, basically warning you not to rush into them once you unlock them because once again, they're quick to unlock in your tech tree once you get the red cubes and you may think, oh, that's awesome. I'm going to try to get into these and start launching these things just to be disappointed on how much power you get. Kind of a forewarning there. Maybe something to wait on until you get later on down into the tech tree and are able to do the photon generation and can do whatever this is with the gravitation lens. So let me know what you thought about this guide. Did you find it helpful? Do you disagree with my findings? Let me know down in the comments and consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell if you did find it helpful to be notified when I upload other guides like this. And I don't just cover this game. I cover a whole ton of different games. So you never know when I'm going to be making guides for a game that you may be playing. All right. That is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider in that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my Elite Crow Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time. Thanks for watching.